Social security is a better investment than stocks. <laughs> what? You're freaking, you're riding with Biden? I'm gonna prove it to you here. Now, you might not want to hear it, but I'll show you the numbers and you'll say, ooh, that guy Josh makes sense. All right, before we get started, gotta wear my B shirt. Why? Because the Bruins are playing game seven against the Maple Leafs tonight, which I won't be watching because I'll be doing a live stream and I can't watch because if I did, I would go insane watching the Bruins. Uh, anyway, the Bruins will be the only team in Major League Baseball, uh, NBA, or NHL, if they lose tonight, who's lost two consecutive series when they were up 3-1. Last year, they were up 3-1 against Florida. Marshawn had a chance to put him away in game five, and he missed with like four seconds left in, in the third period. And the the the, uh, the 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 Panthers came back and won that game. They won game six, and they won game seven in overtime too. And just basically sliced all of our throats and threw us off a building. It was crazy. The Bruins lost game five in overtime. Oh, against the Leafs. So they won one, game one, lost game two, won game three, and game four, lost game five in overtime at home. What happened last year? Won game one, lost game two at home, won, uh, won game three, won game four at on the road, lost game five in overtime, lost game six on the road last year and this year is literally repeating itself. Now, on the other hand, the Toronto Maple Leafs have lost like six straight game sevens. So they're up against it too. So both fan bases are... Uh, Anyway, so come on. I'm actually predicting the Bruins are going to come out heavy tonight and win going away. 5-1 is my prediction, which scares me because normally I don't pick my teams to win. I just I can't see the Bruins losing tonight. All right, enough of that. So let's go into this. I, I can only hear so many people, would you get to the point? Ah, dude, I don't want to get to the point. Get the point. I got to talk to the bees, baby. Come on. Come on, man. Spoke wheel. Spoke wheel. All right, the spoke B, I mean, spoke B. All right, so let's talk about Social Security. So let's say you're sitting there right now, and you're 62 years old. You're going to say 62 years old. You say, I want to choose Social Security. I got to think about when to take Social Security. Your PIA is 3000 a month. PIA is just your primary insurance amount, the amount you get at your full retirement age. All right, so you're looking at your Social Security statement and say, all right, I'm going to get 3000 a month, but if I take it now, it'll be reduced by 32%, so it'll be 2400 all right? That's early. If I take it with delayed earnings credits, that'll be at 70. Delayed earnings credits at 70. It will be what I write down here, 3720 because it's 24% above your PIA. And that's what everyone's going to sell. They're going to say, all right, well... I could take it for 2000 now or wait eight years and take it for 3720 And if I wait, that... Oh, I need to go get my calculator. Hold on just a second. Hold on, man. And if I, if I take it now, what can happen? I could allow my stocks to grow and grow and grow and build more net worth, more equity. If I wait, I got to pull down my stocks, right? And so that's what people are going to say. I don't want to pull down my stocks because my stocks will give me a better rate of return. They're missing a point. A crucial thing here. So you take the 2040 you put that as a positive minus in your financial calculator, 2040, present value, zero payment. Eight is our N because we're going to wait eight years to see the difference, how much the rate of return would be if we take it early versus we take it later. All right. And then we're going to go 3720 is our future value. And that gives us an interest rate of 7.8%, basically, 7.8%. Interesting. What that doesn't show is the colas that come with it. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. We're going to go to Right Capital, and we're going to look at David and Susan's sample. And we're going to show you guys something here. We're going to go to Retirement. And uh, what we're going to show you here, Cash Lows. Let's see the current plan. Summary. And you're going to see they have no, well, actually, they have no Social Security. They're waiting to get Social Security until they're 70. So they turn 70 on the last of the day of the year, all right? So the reason I got this at 70 in 2032, they turned 70 on December 31st. That way in 2033, their first 12 months of social security will kick in. So you can see their first year of social security, if they wait until they're 70 is 78,450, all right? And this is not, this, these are two comparisons. Just the, I don't want you to compare the numbers. I just want you to compare the percentages, all right? So we're not, we don't care what this is. We're just looking at the percentage. Does that make sense? Don't worry about the numbers. I'm just using this as an example. All right, actually, I'm gonna put this 7.8% over here. 7.8. All right, so at 70, they'll get 78,450. 
All right. Now, if they, if they took it at 62, and we're going to let Wright Capital just figure this out for us, we're going to go to Profile, and we're going to hit Income, and we're going to hit Salary, not Salary, Salary. We're going to hit Social Security, and we're going to take it at 62. Boink. And we're going to come down here for Salary. Salary. Sally will do the same, 62. Boink. All right, so watch what happens here. Now we're going to go to Retirement. We're going to go to Cash Flows. All right. And we're going to see what it would be if they took that 62, the first full year. And it would be 36,000, yeah, 634. 36, 634. If they waited until their, their full retirement age, it would be 58,922. All right. So what's happening here, again, don't pick, the, the numbers don't matter in terms of 2,000, 3,000, or 3,700. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the actual percentage increase. I hope that makes sense. I'm just telling you right now because I can hear some people say, well, we just had Dave and Sally, Sally both making 50,000 a year for, the, for their entire life. It's just no big deal. So notice again, $2,040 at 62, 3,000 is our PIA at 65, 67, and 3720 at, six, at 70. Remember, you got to make this decision when you're 62. You have to decide to either freaking go or stay. That's it. I'm going to go and get it, or I'm going to stay and not get Social Security. So this is what you're looking at right here. But in reality, there's something happening here that's not that a lot of people don't see. So what we do is we take our trusted calculator. We say 36,634 is their present value. 8 is their number of years. No payment. And then we say 78,450, their future value. That gives us a compounded interest rate of 9.986. 9.986, 9.986%. Why? Now, because I'm only using a 2.4% COLA, by the way. So here we had 7.8. You had 2.4% COLAs, and you're basically getting, you're getting 10% right there. Isn't that pretty interesting? So what a lot of people do is they say, yeah, but Josh, my investments. But the investments factor in inflation with it. That's the thing. I put a million dollars in there. You know, I expect to get 8% a year. Well, that 8% a year, some of that's going to be a base of inflation. That's not a real return. That's a nominal return. So you can't compare Social Security without inflation to your investments, which have inflation factored in. That's a nominal rate of return. You have to look at both. You got to look at the inflation-adjusted amount of Social Security. So the question that comes to my mind is, let me show you what I did with these guys here. I had, a, I had them with a million smackaroonies. I said, okay. At the end of 2024, we got 1.094 million. And by the time they take Social Security, they have uh, right here, where was it? Hold on a second. And the other example is using, as adding their Social Security payments into their investment accounts. We don't want to do that. So here they got 1.094 million. And again, they're 62. They're saying, should I take Social Security now or should I wait? And they said, well, I got 1.094 million. And then they said, I'm going to wait. And when I wait, I'll have 1.614 million, well, 615 million right there in eight years. What's my compounded annual rate of return there? Well, in that case, it's 5%. 5%. And the only reason for that is because we're, I get a freaking itch. The only reason, because that's what I gave, a 5.3% rate of return. Now, you may get better than this 9.986. Really, though? Really? Do you really expect your markets to give you a better than 9.96? Now, you can make an argument of 7.8. Historically, that's pretty good, but I think the markets will do better. But you're not getting 7.8 by delaying Social Security. You're getting 9.986 because you got to factor in the cost of living adjustments that go with it. This doesn't factor in COLA. This is a guy who's 62 today sitting there saying, I, can, I have to take a choice, make a choice. Today. Yeah, I can take my Social Security and my payment today would be 2040 However, if I wait... And I wait till I'm 70, my payment today would be in the future would be 3720. That's wrong. It won't be 3720. It'll be 3720 plus your 2.4% COLA. This is wrong. That's what people do. They always overlook the inflation adjustment that comes with Social Security. And yet they look at their investment, not this, they look at their investment portfolio. They say, hey, I had 1.09 million in there, and now I got 1.61 million. That's a rate of return of, in this case, 5%. Well, the 5% is, uh, is nominal. That's before inflation. Like this. This right here is with inflation considered too. And never mind the tax situation. Never mind there's no risk at all in terms of your stock portfolio. It could go down 
57 percent all of 2008 there's nothing here that could happen like that oh the government could take it away okay and nothing that ticks me off too the government could take away my social security so stocks are the answer because if they take away social security the stock market will just boom <sighs> look you gotta do what you gotta do i don't care but don't tell me and i mean you can tell me whatever the hell you want that oh if i i want to take social security early because i want to let my portfolio grow I, I just i find that to be i find that to be based on this number right here and even there you're assuming your portfolio is going to give you 7.8 percent or more or more well historically it has not necessarily depends on how your portfolio is, is constructed and just because historically it has doesn't mean it will in the future again as i said a thousand times a sunday there's no statistical statistical analysis that's legitimate uh that says we have a rate of return that we can expect going forward we for a 25 or 30 year time frame there is just not enough sample size of unique 25 to 30 year time frames that you can say i expect a certain rate of return because the historical numbers have said that you just don't have enough for statistic relevance you just don't for unique unique means they're all unique to the other sample size and we don't have that we have four or five that's it so for you to sit there and say well, the historical numbers, I'd say, well, what are you, on rolling 30-year time frames? Yes, that, that's not statistically relevant. It's just not because they're overlapping. 1926 to 1955 overlaps with a 96% amount from 1927 to 1956. That is not statistically unique. That's not statistically relevant. You can't, you, you can't, you can do whatever the hell you want, but I'm just saying at the end of the day, we simply, because it has happened in the past over 25, 30 years, it certainly doesn't mean it will in the future because there's not a big enough sample size. Anyway. Hope that helps, man. I, I, I would look forward to you guys thinking a little bit differently about when it comes to Social Security. 9.986 versus 7.8. Both are actually quite good. I'm only expecting the stocks to give us, in this case, I'll share with I, 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 my expected rate of return on the, the uh, when I do financial plans, 5.3 on a 60-40 portfolio. Oh, with a standard deviation of 10. And what that standard deviation means is that would be a 25% decline on any given year. 25%. What is Social Security's decline? Nothing. Nothing. I right, love your thoughts. God bless. We'll see you live streaming tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Go Boston Bruins, baby. We'll see you.